Hey guys, today I wanted to clear some things up about the previous video and give my opinion on the subject. If you haven't watched the previous video, what are you still doing here? Leave. Go watch it. Now. And honestly, if you have watched it, you should probably watch it again. It's been a few weeks since I posted the video for a refresher, just to make this video make more sense. Link for that video will be in the description. For those of you who watched it but may have forgotten, the topic was should games that use variable ratio reinforcement be regulated? Due to me double dipping and using it as my ASU school assignment, there were certain things that I wanted to include but did not due to the assignment's boundaries. For instance, I was not actually allowed to give my opinion on the subject in question. So, do I think they should be regulated? Personally, absolutely not. I don't want the government, or any agency for that matter, to be anywhere near making decisions on how video games are created. When you have people who have no idea about video games, making laws about video games, you are going to have a bad time. A recent example of this uh, incompetence is the copyright case of Triple Town v Yeti Town. For those of you who do not know, copyright law does not protect against borrowing the underlying idea of a creative work only the specific expression of that idea. The rules, game mechanics, and functionality of a video game are said to merge with the underlying idea. This means that game mechanics are not entitled to a pr protection. Only the expressive elements of the game are copyrightable. In cases like Asteroids v Meteors and Karate Champ v World Karate Championship, this was followed. However, in Triple Town v Yeti Town, the judges wanted to try something different. They wanted to get an expert opinion you think they would go to game designers about this, or, you know, anyone who has experience in game development. But no, they went to video game bloggers instead. Yeti Town had copied the mechanics of Triple Town, but was actually fairly different in its expression of those mechanics. However, Yeti Town got struck down. The overlying theme of this is that you cannot regulate a game mechanic. Imagine if when Mario came out, it copyrighted jumping. That would limit so much potential for the games that came after it. The same situation occurs when instead of copywriting the jump mechanic, instead we are now straight up outlawing the jumping mechanic. The same result occurs, limiting the potential for creativity. Who is going to decide when a game has randomization whether it is using VRR or not? Vari variable results and variable ratio reinforcement are very different, but they blur the lines at many points. For instance, when the player creates a new procedurally generated Minecraft world, they have a variety of ways the world can be generated. This is done so that the player cannot predict what the environments will be and it enhances their explorative experience. This is a variable reward for players who like to explore. However, what is somewhat ambiguous is if it is created to condition the player to complete a task. Are they conditioning the player to explore more often? Some people aren't the explorative type and they'll just settle down in the place where they were dropped in. Can just playing the game be considered a task that they are conditioning the player to do? Or would the qualification of that task be, have to be a task within the game? It is simply not feasible without serious adverse effects on the gaming industry. In general, I believe the industry should continue to practice self-regulation. You see, there is this wonderful thing called the ESRB, the Entertainment Software Rating Board. This organization does not have any ties to the government, and they rate games. They have no actual lawful power over games. However, console manufacturers will only allow games to be sold for their console if they go through the ESRB. They don't have to worry about law, and games that use VRR could potentially be rated M by them. This, however, is wishful thinking. If you didn't know, this is how the ESRB rates a game. If you want your game to be rated by the ESRB, you must fill out a questionnaire online. Then you must send them a DVD, which contains the most extreme parts of your game. After they view this, they rate the game. The ESRB doesn't actually play the games that they rate. They mainly just focus on graphic content when they rate things. Things like swearing, gore, sexuality, drug use, violence. Those are the things they're looking for. In a DVD, those th are the things they see. They are not looking at how some of these systems are used to manipulate people, and probably can't tell just from a DVD and a questionnaire. Due to this, I don't think their system would be competent enough to make any decisions over VRR, especially due to how complicated judging VRR would be. 
There is only one use of VRR that I know of that is actually feasible to be regulated, and I'm not even sure that it should. The reason for this is because the task being conditioned is to spend actual money. This is the selling of what I call variable ratio products. Things like Halo 5's rec packs and Overwatch's loot crates are recent examples of these. They are basically a microtransaction for a digital product in which the consumer doesn't know what they're going to get. They just know they will get something. Most of the time, these systems are populated with a bunch of dud products so that the consumer is unlikely to get the specific product that they want, encouraging them to buy another. They also don't give the player any alternate ways of getting the items they want other than going through the same exact system using in-game currency. If a person has a lot of disposable income, or an addictive personality, it will often lead to them dropping like $200 in like one sitting. It is basically a slot machine with a new coat of paint. It is simply a despicable practice that has become more and more prevalent lately. The ESRB could rate any game with this rated M to protect the children, but there is a fairly simple reality to this. Children don't have credit cards. For the most part, children are unable to do any spending online. There are cases where a child will get a hold of their parents' credit card who, and drop like a thousand bucks on some microtransactions, and the news blows it out of proportion. But those are rare cases. Children are not the target of variable ratio products online. The target is adults with addictive personalities. After all, it's not like businesses would market addictive variable ratio products to children, am I right? <coughs> I believe there is a fairly simple solution to this problem. In general, these companies do warn you of what you're getting into with variable ratio products. They have to, otherwise it would legally be considered gambling. You can simply not buy them. For video games that use manipulative VRR design philosophies, we can either hope that developers and producers will design more responsibly, or here's a more effective strategy. You vote with your wallet. Now that you know how these games use Skinner's box models, if you don't like that, don't buy them. Even if they have some really gorgeous views or whatever else you like, educate yourself on their systems. Decide whether the game is worth it if its other content has a Skinner's box model. And if you have an addictive personality, it may be best to avoid these games entirely. Along with this, you can tell others not to buy them either. That's how I believe we can stop this exploitation. Thanks for watching. Stay tuned for more design talks and other stuff from us. I'll see you guys next time.